everybody. Welcome to News by Muse. We are back for another interview about a great film called Finding Her Beat, which is going to be uh, released during the Mill Valley Film Festival, which is uh, going to be its world premiere at this film festival. Uh, we have the team behind the, the movie. Can you please introduce yourself and what you did with the film? Uh, my name is Dawn Mickelson. I'm director, producer, and um, I share those hats with my name is Carrie Pickett, and I'm the co-director and also the director of photography. And I'm Jennifer Weir, and I'm a co-producer, and um, I'm in the film. Awesome. So please tell me, what was it about the story that you wanted to bring it onto the screen? Don? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this, as Jen has been saying, this is a, a film that was uh, born from lunch. <laughs> Maybe that isn't how you said it, but that's how I'm saying it. That Jen and I got together to have lunch. We've known each other for like 20 some years. And uh, she starts telling me about this amazing concert that she's putting together. And, you know, she wanted to document the concert itself in order to, you know, be able to show it to other people, proof of concept. We did this amazing thing. And the more we talk and the more we talked about the overlaps and parallels in our own lives as women in creative fields that are predominantly male and you know the barriers we face, but also the joys of that. Um, and, and what was coming together with her beat, it became very clear that this was a film. And so I told Jen, this is a film. And she, and she was like, okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do right. it. <laughs> so, well, yeah. Is there any other better way to do it when it's something like that, where you come up with an idea and it just kind of like just flows? And it always seems like movies that come out like that are always seem to connect very well with the audience. Yeah, this from the very beginning, this kind of had a life of its own. Like every time I talked about the Herbie concert, I got another yes. And then every time we talked about the film, we got another yes. You know, like people just... I think it really resonates. I think it's time to see more of these stories on 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 stage and on film, and and um, and so I'm so excited that both Don and Carrie could could bring this out of sort of this moment in time and into a place where it can resonate with a larger audience. Exactly. And I think the film is um, centers on Tycho and centers on this dream of realizing, bringing all these amazing women taiko players together from Japan and North America. But on a deeper level, it's really also about family and community and personal empowerment and taking agency for your own life. And so I think those are universal themes that anyone can resonate with. And so I think that's one of the powers, uh, powerful things that emerged out of this story that we didn't really realize was going to happen necessarily yeah. when we started the film. Yeah. And Taiko such a, because I have my, I have friends who actually do Taiko drums. Yay! And uh, <laughs> one of them is being my friend who's the drummer of Los Lobos does Taiko as well. And like what I've learned from it is how spiritual the drumming is and the way it and that's one thing that you guys really represent in the film is the fact that the spirituality of the drums. What was it about showing that and giving that as part of this story? Wow. Well, for, for me, it's just that, you know, uh, for a lot of people who are unfamiliar with taiko drumming, there's just so many aspects to it. There's the physical aspect, the dance choreographic um, aspect, but there's also a very spiritual healing aspect. And I think, you know, people approach the art from very different perspectives and different places in their life. Um, but for most people, that aspect is really resonating, whether you're a beginner or professional. And um, I think it was really lovely the way Don and Carrie could bring that out without, you know, saying directly, this is this, but just showing how people you know, um, how, showing how this this art form integrates into people's way of living and being in this world and how they show up. And it was quite lovely and, and quite moving. And I I think, you know, that's 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 what I love about this is that it's not just this moment on stage. It's this whole universe behind each one of these women. And if we had the time, we could follow all of them. Um, but what they brought forward, I thought was quite beautiful and intimate. Yeah. And also, I think it was oh. interesting to try and teach about what Tycho is and 
without necessarily giving a how-to instruction booklet about this is the Odaiko drum and, you know, it does this and, you know, to really bring people on a journey. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would just want to throw out there is the more we show folks this film, you know, because we've had a a pre-screening and and our supporters and, you know, various people have seen little, you know, private screenings of it. uh, There is a cross-cultural human experience about drumming. You know, in almost every culture, there is the drum. And, you know, some cultures it's more prevalent than others. But, you know, there's been talk about how um, the first thing you hear in utero is rhythm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so it's so deeply innate to who we are in our world experience. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, we just got a sound mix at Skywalker Sound because we were so fix- fixated. I was fixated. We were fixated on, on making sure that that theatrical experience really um, did the best it could to portray a live experience, which is a full body experience. Your body bi- vibrates as an audience member, you know, dust falls off the ceiling at most <laughs> venues. You know, it's it's a, a full experience. So. Um, yeah. And no better place to go than Skywalker sound to get your sound engineering done. So that's, that's really impressive. That should alone should get people to go watch it because that sound is so rich. But uh, the one thing I do want to ask Carrie, when you were filming this and really trying, what was some of the aspects you were looking for when you were behind the, behind the camera? Well, um, uh, my work over uh, the decades has really focused on family and community. And so I'm interested in intimacy and I'm interested in bringing people to a place and, and and within intimate moments for which they would not normally be invited. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that my strength as a filmmaker is to be able to be right there all the time and to have the people around me feel safe. Mm-hmm. And um, also to be able to move and flow uh, easily with a very small crew. Mm-hmm. And so doing this in a cinema verite style, it was very important to us that the people feel like they are really on the journey with us and that there's no without, you know, a use of interviews and without a use of too much um, kind of historical explaining. We had to put some um, Tycho basics in at the beginning to give people a foundation of where they're at. And then it's like, you're off and you're on this journey toward this goal, which had a lot of obstacles. And there were a lot of times when it wasn't really at all assured that it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so I think any good film has aspects of transformation and also um, surprise. And we have that. Yeah. And it doesn't, it's not often that we get to talk to people, cinematographers. So we got to get a little nerdy now. Okay. Did you used to shoot this film. What kind of camera equipment did you use to shoot this film? Because it looks amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Well, um, we used the Canon C300 Mark II, and um, we filmed in C Log, which gave um, the editors and those of us, before of us, worked on the edit of this film. And so along the way, the C Log doesn't look so good, but. Um, we had Oscar uh, at Red Shoes just bring it to life with the color and the coloring at the end. And so I think um, our colorist and then uh, um, Carly Zacuela, our, our audio person, also helped maybe with some of that verite thing that happens when you rub your mic against somebody as you're turning or, you know, um, it, you know, other life happens with sound. Uh, and so I think all that really made a difference. But this was the first film that I had a dedicated second camera person on the film. And Dawn worked very hard to find fabulous um, people for the crew behind the scenes so that it would represent the um, queer and non-binary and, and women who were in front of the camera. And, and Asian. And Asian women. I just take that. For yeah, yeah, and pan <laughs> Asian, you know, pan Asian women, and so um, she worked really hard to make sure that that happened behind the scenes, and so I think the synergy of all of that really came together, and I really appreciated working with the people on second camera, and then for the. 
film, um, the filming the concert, we had five cameras on that uh, final concert, and we could have used one more. <laughs> uh, that's the first time I've ever heard we could have used one more camera. I always hear audio, like we could have used more microphones. Used to, but that's uh, more of that too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> being somebody who, that's why I always ask because we never know who's going to watch this, and the Canon C three hundred is not an an outrageously ex out of price camera. You could actually pick one up. Yeah. And, that's why it shows people that you, it doesn't matter what you have. You could film with anything to make yourself a, to tell a story yes. that actually could get out. Um, I have a couple questions left. The one thing I did want to talk about was the fact of representation. Uh, this this movie really does show an, another culture and brings cultures together through the use of the taiko drum. How important was it to tell of, and bring that cultural relevance to a ma the masses? Wow. Well, for me, it's at the heart of what we're doing, right, Don and Carrie? Oh, God, it's just yeah. like it's it was in the DNA of the project from the beginning and just this idea that, you know, let's <laughs> I, I, I I just say, like, let's fill the screen with Asian faces and not through suffering and not through trauma, but for for like celebrating and, and being powerful and, and, you know, emerging into their life in their in their best way possible. Um, so for me, it was a lot of was about uh, representation and claiming the narrative and claiming your space, you know, on stage, on film, on screen. Um, and uh, this is sort of my small, teeny, tiny revolution. Exactly. <laughs> and and to, on the on the other side of the camera, I think, you know, like I often think of Mealy Hay, who is our composer, and mm -hmm. she's based in Australia um, near Sydney. Mm -hmm. And she saw this film and uh, saw herself in it. She identifies as a member of the Asian diaspora. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so she she saw this film and immediately was like, I get this emotionally. I get that. And it's incredibly important that your music. I mean, that's one of the other emotional drivers, you know, and it's a primary one in some cases, in some scenes. Mm -hmm. And so her heart and her, her, you know, everything was in this film and it takes the emotional journey to the next level. And, you know, it's, it's because it was her experience on screen. And so the representation behind the camera, I think is critical as well. Yeah. And I really do. And I've always believed that music is a great unifier of cultures and people so this is what that film does don don i'll leave you up to the last one which is the most important ones oh, where can wow. people where can people oh. see the see the film and how will they be able to see it because uh we want them to use a tv audience to really go out and see this uh film right so currently we're we have our world premiere this weekend at the mill valley film festival and we'll be doing 13-ish festivals in the next two months. Um, so we will be across the United States, New York, North Carolina, Seattle, all, uh, Arkansas, all over the place. But you can find these screenings listed on our website, uh, findingherbeat.com. We'll be announcing them as they happen on social, Finding Her Beat on both um, Facebook and Instagram. And, you know, this, this is just the beginning for this film. Uh, we have, you know, impact campaigns going up. Eventually we'll be doing broadcast and, um, and streaming and all of the things. So those are the best places to, to find out when that is available for you. But I will say, try to get into a theater because that, that Skywalker mix that's going to be something. And then also we have live taiko drumming happening at many of these festivals where local groups are going to be coming in playing before or after the screening to, you know, increase this, the power of the film even greater and as well as connect communities with, hey, you can go play taiko. Go mm -hmm. talk to these folks. They are in your community right now. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And hopefully in LA, we get to see you come into to city. Uh, we have a lot of great taiko groups here in this. In yeah, this, fantastic. LA groups. We got to give a shout out to East LA Taiko because they're it's my friend's uh, taiko group. Oh, so we got to got to give yeah, a shout out to them and right hopefully bring them out. But uh, well, we'll be at the Newport Beach Festival. Oh, yes. great! Yeah, we're gonna be there as well. So definitely, we got to oh, see that in person. Yes. Because Yay. I'm sorry, 
when you get screeners, you can't watch them in your computer or on a TV. You got to watch it in a movie theater. So I'll definitely be there to watch that because awesome. you can't experience, you can't get that full experience as you do in a movie theater. But thank you so much for stopping with us. We're really looking forward to seeing the film. Do you have a date for the Newport Beach Film Festival yet before we leave? I can pull it up if somebody else has got it faster than me. Because um, we are next week it starts. So we got to make sure we get people. Right. Oh, that's out so there. Great. It's the 16th. The 16th of October. Mm-hmm. So definitely check it out. 16th of October, Newport Beach Film Festival. Not too far away if you're in the Southern California area. This is, uh, I'm telling you, I've seen it. This is a film you have to experience on the big screen. It's not a small screen type of experience for anyone. So thank you so much for stopping with us. We really appreciate it. And we're looking forward to uh, next week, October 16th at the Newport Beach Film Festival. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.